Hi, and welcome to the Gym Box Yoga. My name is John. For our 60-minute yoga practice today, very dynamic poses that will focus on outer hips and inner thighs. So get ready. Let's start at the top of the mat. Want your toes to point directly forward, your feet about hip distance apart, just like this. Just want to create a nice, strong, sturdy foundation for yourself. I'd like to begin in stillness and silence. Get into our bodies and focus on the breath. Just taking slow, deep breaths, feeling breath rise, the lifting and lengthening of the spine, the expansion of your lungs, the lifting of your chest and your heart. And on the exhale, just feel the connection to your core. Draw the navel in towards your spine. Just feel the abdominals begin to engage here. Just as you stand nice and tall in mountain pose, very well supported in your own body. Take a few more breaths here. Let's prepare to move. Here we go. Let's inhale, extend the arms up overhead. You can take your time with this. Just reaching up very slowly. Then exhale, swan dive. Now we're hinging from the hips, a little bend of the knees here. You can feel like you're sitting back into a chair. See how my back is nice and flat. And then when you come down, you'll feel that natural rounding of the spine. Then inhale, spinal extension or monkey pose. See how I'm lifting up, moving forward just a little bit so the weight is out towards the toes. Then exhale, release, come back down to forward fold. Let's reverse the swan dive, come all the way back up to standing. Let's do that again, just a nice simple warm up. Moving with the breath, so let's exhale, swan dive, forward and down. Find your toes, you release your head, neck and shoulders here, give them a quick shake. Then inhale, monkey pose, extending to a flat back, a little tabletop posture. Then exhale, release, come back down to forward fold. You just let that hang heavily forward. Let's rise back up, full inhale, come all the way up, reaching beyond your ceiling. And let's do that one more time. Exhale, swan dive, here we go. Just slow motion moving here, taking your time, moving with your breath. Rise up halfway, feel the very top of your head move forward. Then exhale, release, coming back down. Let's reverse the swan dive, come all the way back up, reaching up. And bring the hands to heart center. Just a few breaths here. Just a very simple warm up to get the body moving and moving with the breath. We'll add on to our sequence. Here we go. Inhale, extend the arms up. You can even look up if that feels okay on your neck. Then exhale, swan dive, sitting back into your imaginary chair. All the way down to your toes, release your head, neck, and shoulders. Inhale here, monkey pose. Grow long through the spine. Your legs may straighten out a bit here too. On the exhale, we're bringing the hands to the floor. Step your left foot straight back. Maybe you wiggle it back a little farther here so it's almost at the back edge of your mat. Okay, we're going to a lunge here. So actually, you're gonna bring your left knee to the floor, just like this. Then rise up, bring the hands to your thigh. Now, if you're on a hardwood floor or if you have a thin mat, you may wanna pad your knee. Okay, you can do so by using a towel or a blanket or just fold your mat underneath your knee there just to protect it. Alrighty, I'm gonna unfold this so you can see my right foot. I'm gonna creep the foot forward just a bit there so my ankle and my toes are well out in front of the knee joint here. I'm gonna be lunging. I wanna make sure my knee joint is protected when I lunge, okay? So we're gonna inhale, grow nice and long, very tall up top. It may even feel like you're lifting up and leaning back like you're doing a back bend. Then exhaling, feeling the hips move forward, right there. So as I shift the body forward, my knee will stop right over the ankle, right there. You really wanna pay attention to this sensation. You may feel this already. So the nice lengthening and stretch sensation in the hip flexor right there, okay? Meanwhile, no sensation here, and that's good. So just be aware, just wanna demonstrate, if your foot's too close, but your knee is way out in front of your toes or your ankle, or even if your heel's off the floor, you might put too much strain there. All right, a couple more breaths in our nice deep lunge. 
Make sure you're breathing in, growing longer and taller. Exhale if you've created a little bit more space in your body, going a little deeper, feeling this nice stretch. Okay? So we're opening things up. We're opening up the hip flexor. We're going to work the outer hips and inner thighs a little bit too. All right, let's release. Bring the hands to the floor. Rise up onto the toes behind you. Lift your knee. A little push up to the top of the mat. Let's do the other side. Inhale, monkey pose, extending here. Exhale, hands to the floor. Lift your right foot, stepping straight back. Now when you step back, making sure you're stepping back and your feet are still hip distance apart. Let's bring the knee to the floor. Rise up so your hands are on your thigh. Let's creep those toes forward. Right there, so we have nice room, a lot of room there when we lunge forward. Okay, my hands are on the thigh. Inhale, lifting nice and long. Then exhale slowly. Take your time as you take this forward so you feel that stretch on the right hip flexor. You can even have the sensation of shifting or moving your thigh forward. So your hands are here, right? And so maybe sliding or just slightly pushing the thigh forward, just creating a little bit more space here in the crease of the leg there so you can go a little deeper. Ah, use the breath to guide you. Another sensation here, just be aware if the knee here wants to just drop out to the side, okay? You wanna keep this squeezing in sensation as if maybe something's on the inside of your thigh. You have to press into it. You're doing that with both legs. It'll keep the hips strong and keep you well supported in the pose. Because we're gonna do something else a little bit later in our practice where we'll need that sensation. All right, let's release the posture. Bring the hands to the floor. Up on the toes, lift your knee. Let's step up to the top of the mat. Inhale, spinal extension and a fold. Exhale. Let's go ahead and reverse the swan dive. Come all the way up to standing, reaching up. Bring the hands to heart center. Okay. So that's our first posture, just starting to open up. A little stretch, a little release in our hip flexors, which can get a little tight. Okay. Think about sitting in a chair. Let's actually do chair pose and I'll talk about this. Let's rise up to the sky with the arms and sit back into chair pose. Just to relax your arms a bit, go ahead and place your hands on your hips. All righty. Now, what are you doing most of the day? Are you sitting most of the day or standing most of the day? You know, we find our bodies in a seated position or a forward fold sensation a lot of the, a lot of the time bent over, even our shoulders pull forward a little bit. So some of the postures we're gonna be doing, like the one we did, the lunge, really reopens this space. Cause think about sitting in a chair, all this begins to tighten up right through here. So we're gonna reopen the body, okay? Let's go ahead and stand up tall, we're just gonna keep it moving. Then exhale, swan dive. Right back down to the toes. Inhale, monkey pose here, lift. Hands to the floor, same thing as before, stepping the left foot back. Let's bring the knee to the floor here. We're gonna lift the arms up this time. Okay, go ahead and creep the right foot forward, lunging a little deeper. Ah, see how the body is starting to move slightly into a back bend. Okay, just feeling that stretch. So thinking of this as kind of the counter pose to sitting in a chair, because you're now stretching that part of the body. All righty, let's come up nice and tall. Stay here, <sighs> lift up onto your toes. Now here's where you want that squeezing sensation, okay? Moving or pressing into the inner thigh. <sighs> With an exhale, navel to spine, you're just gonna lift yourself back up to <sighs> a high lunge here. Let's reach forward, hands down, step up to the top of the mat. Other side, monkey pose first. Exhale, hands to the floor, step back. Go ahead and kneel down and lift the arms up. Let's creep the left foot forward, lunge deeply. Feel that nice stretch, our counter pose to sitting in a chair. Reaching, oh this feels good. Good openings here. Good opening for the shoulders, your chest, even your back with the arms extended. All right, let's just rise up nice and tall right there with the upper body. Lift up onto your toes, inner squeeze here. And here, navel to spine. 
with the lift. Whoa, if you lose your balance, that's okay. Then reach forward and step up to the top of the mat. Inhale, monkey pose and fold. Let's just nicely release, maybe shake it out a little bit here. Okay, again, a monkey pose. Let's go back to the floor. Hands to the mat. Let's take both feet back to plank pose. You can just step back right here. We'll come down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Let's extend the right leg up behind you, really strong and straight here. Bring it up to the top of the mat. Heel stays lifted behind you. Reach forward, come up. Here's our high lunge. Let's go ahead and open this up to a warrior two right there, okay? So here's another hip opener. We're getting a little bit opening here in the inner thigh and the hip flexor, right through here, part of the body. If you need to, maybe a little wider in the stance, going for a good 90 degree angle here. Again, making sure your knee, one, isn't dropping to the inside of your foot or shooting past your ankle or your toes. All you have to do is just make that adjustment, creep your toes forward, so your knee is stacked nicely over the ankle there. Side angle pose. Just get a nice side stretch, won't be here too long. Just a nice stretch to the side body. Inhale, exhale, let's turn. Rise up onto the toes behind you, step back, plank, plank. Let's come down, up dog, and downward facing dog. Other side, left leg extends. Bring it to the top of the mat. Squeezing to the inner thighs, which will help you lift into your high lunge, then opening into warrior two. A little wider in the stance, perhaps, creeping your toes forward, watching the good structure of your body. Just making sure my arms are parallel with the floor and really extend and reach. Go to a side angle pose. I'm modifying this pose for this first time. You can just take this arm overhead. Nice stretch. Right through the whole right side of your body. Inhale. Exhale, turn. Find the floor. Rise up onto the toes behind you. Step back, plank pose. Bring it down. Up dog. And downward facing dog. Okay, just bring the knees to the floor. Sit back into hero pose. A nice stretch for the quads, even for the knees and your ankles. But we're going to take a seat here. Let's come to cobbler's pose. Okay, or bound angle pose. It's one of the proper names of this posture. So you want to bring the bottoms of your feet together here. Heels, you can bring them in relatively close towards the pelvis. Scoop up your toes or hold on to your ankles or even your shins. You just want to be able to sit up nice and tall here. All right, so here we are hitting the inner thighs. Now, if you need a little bit more sensation with this pose, feel free to hinge forward. Here we go. We're gonna inhale, lift and lengthen through the spine like you're trying to get up off the floor. Then exhale, send your heart up and over like you're going to have a little wall right here. And you wanna go up and over your wall. So lifting, then going over your imaginary wall. That way your spine stays nice and straight and you get more sensation in the inner thighs. Make sure you keep the breathing strong and intentional, especially the exhales. This is the exhales that allow you to go a little bit deeper into your poses. We'll take two more breaths here. Then go ahead and rise back up. All right, stay where you are. I'm just going to extend your legs out in front of you here. Just come to a simple staff pose. So legs are nice and straight. Flex your feet here so you really feel like you're pushing your heels forward and your toes are pulling in toward yourself. Hands are right by your side, right by your hips. A little push into the floor as if you're lifting yourself up off the floor. Okay. So you feel a little lighter in your low back and your hips. Roll the shoulders back, face forward. Take a nice full inhale, bring breath up to your chest and heart space. Exhale, feel the navel pull in towards the spine. You notice sometimes I breathe out through the mouth. 
which is actually okay. It really helps to remind me that really expelling that breath. So that's okay to do. A couple more breaths. Really feeling a nice stretch even here in the hamstrings. So we're gonna work a little bit of the hamstrings here too. All right, let's go ahead and cross the legs. Push yourself over those cross legs. Catch yourself with your hands in front. Let's step back into plank pose. Bring it down. Up dog. And downward facing dog. Okay. Let's take the right leg up into the sky, reaching. Let's bend it. We're going to twist open. So your heel is coming down toward your back end, twisting so your right knee is pointing up towards the ceiling, left heel pressing down towards the floor. This is another hip opener. Let's unwind the pose. Re-extend the leg and bring the foot up to the top of the mat. High lunge, so keep the left heel lifted. Opening warrior two. All right, we're gonna lengthen the right leg here. We're going to a triangle pose. Shifting forward, and then coming down. Just like this. So feeling a nice stretch and lengthening through the hamstring. Making sure that your head is in the same alignment as your leg here. So I just turn my head just to be sure that it's right here. So just be aware if you're trying to reach the floor, for example, and your backside is going behind you and your head is out of alignment from your foot. Because you don't really have to touch the floor in triangle pose or even the side angle pose. It's really okay to have your hand here on the inner thigh. <sighs> All right, let's exhale, bend the knee, and rise up to a warrior two. Let's windmill forward, step back, plank pose, bring it down again, and upward facing dog with a breath in, exhale, downward facing dog. Other side, so left leg extends, let's bend it, bring your heel toward your back side, lift your knee higher, and twist open, right heel pressing down towards the floor, big stretch, Unwind it, re-extend. Bring the foot to the top of the mat. High lunge. So I'm setting things up. Before I even rise up here, I'm squeezing to the inner thighs and my core body to help me rise up with good balance. Opening, warrior two. Checking out my arms. Let's lengthen the left leg there, straight as can be, without locking out the knee. Just be aware of that. And shifting forward and coming down. So your focus can be up like this, reaching up or looking up at your right hand. You have a neck neutral or even look down. Looking down helps you to be aware of the alignment of your head. Making sure it's in the same plane as the leg. All right, let's bend the left knee, rise back up, warrior two, windmill forward. So step back, plank, come down. Inhale, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Take a big step, jump or walk. I'm just gonna step forward, up to the top of the mat. Monkey pose, flat back, exhale, release. Let's come to a chair pose. Rise up, take a seat there. This is also a good core strengthening posture. You're drawing the navel in towards your spine. Let's stand up tall, reach high. Bring the hands to heart center. Your body's probably already warming up. Mine certainly is. Okay, So we'll want to do that. <sighs> Making sure the hips, thighs, inner thighs, hip flexors are all well <sighs> opened. Ready for some more dynamic poses. All right, let's keep it moving. Here we go. Inhale, extend the arms up. Exhale, let's swan dive. Now maybe the legs are getting a little straighter since we're doing a little bit of hamstring stretching. Inhale, monkey pose. Let's bring the hands to the floor, walk, step or jump back. I'm just stepping back. Plank, stay here nice and strong and long. Lift your hips to the sky, downward facing dog. You can do a little step forward here, just a little bit. Bend your knees slightly, the heels pressing down towards the mat. A little stretch for the calf muscles there too. Right leg extends, reach up. Let's do another quick bend and twist open. Unwind it, re-extend the leg, 
bring the foot to the top of the mat. Let's come to Warrior One this time. So set the left heel down onto the floor behind you here. Face forward. Again, you want that same alignment, the head pointing forward. Rise up. Here's Warrior One. Let's just pause there for a moment because you'll feel a nice stretch and opening on left hip side there. If you like, because we're holding the pose, if you can see this, I'm going to change my posture for just a moment. I'm turning this way so you can see the heel alignment. So I'm basically standing like this. Okay. So heel to heel for that alignment in my warrior one. But I'm going to take my left foot and step out towards the edge of the mat here, which will allow me to turn the hips so they're facing a little bit more forward. Let me face you so you can see that. So the heel alignment at first, stepping out to the side, allows me to open up the hips here so they're square and pointing towards the sides of the room. That gives me a little bit more opening there. Okay. Inhale. On the exhale, opening to warrior two. Now, because we stepped out to the side, we need to step back. So now your heels are back in alignment here in your warrior two. That way your hips are aligned. Just a little tip there in those postures. Let's windmill forward. Step back into plank, hold plank, nice and strong. Hips to the sky, downward facing dog. A little step forward, bent knees at first to lengthen spine, then send the heels down towards the floor. Feel the stretch in the calf muscles. Left leg extends. Bend it, twist open. There we go. Unwind the pose, re-extend the leg. Bring the foot to the top of the mat. Here's our warrior one. Set the heel down. This is where you'll find that alignment of the heels. Nice alignment here. Reach forward, come up. Feel free to step out to the side, square out the hips. You can even bring your hands to your hips to help that alignment. Okay, I'm just gonna face away from you. We should be doing the same thing here. Okay, so hips are square, pushing and pointing outward to the side and reaching the arms overhead. Inhale, exhale, opening to warrior two. Let's reposition the right foot to align the hips. All intentional here to get those hips nicely open. Let's windmill forward. Hands down, step back, plank, holding plank. Then lift the hips to the sky, downward facing dog. Let's go to another hip opener. Right leg extends up. Going to a pigeon pose. So you're gonna bring your right knee to the floor right behind the wrist here, onto the floor. And a little bit of an angling of that leg, at least 45 degrees. I'm gonna face you and mirror you, okay? So, so I brought the knee up to the wrist. I'm actually gonna take it slightly to the outside of the wrist. So maybe move your knee slightly away from the hand. That way you, get an, you can get a nice angle here of the foot and just take the left leg and just start crawling it back towards the back of the room. So you're shifting your weight out of your hands and putting it more in your hips. Okay. Let's just stay tall for just a moment here. Now, if you have some knee issues here and, if you, and you feel like, wow, this is really, doesn't feel too comfortable on this knee at all, especially with the knee out to the side and this pretty dynamic angle of the leg kind of torques the knee, it could torque the knee a little bit. So if it feels a little bit better, maybe bring the knee a little closer, maybe get the foot a little bit more underneath you. That way you have the natural bend and nice alignment of that leg, okay? Another alternative to this pose, stay where you are, let me just show you an alternative to this posture completely, is to actually lie on your back. Cross the leg that you're working on and bring it in. Okay, so it's a nice alternative because you're still working outer hip and maybe the glute as well. So this is a nice alternative to being in pigeon pose. All right, let me rejoin you. So we're here. Feel free to take this a little bit deeper. So maybe an inhale to lift and lengthen through the spine, send the heart up and over your imaginary wall again, keeping the spine nice and straight. 
and coming down, maybe just down to the forearms here. You can even bring your forehead down to the floor. That way the neck here can be very neutral. Okay. I'm just gonna come up to the top of my mat. You can stay right where you are, so we're working the right leg. Let's just take a few more breaths here. ready to rise back up. Now because we shifted weight into the hips a little bit there, <clears throat> we want to shift the weight back into the hand. So just using that back leg, just come up onto your toes and just kind of creep the knee and toes forward like this. That way you put the weight back into your hands. Then you can take this back to a downward facing dog with the right leg in the air. Just a nice extension, very easy. Bring the foot up to the top of the mat. Let's go back to our warrior one. Set the left heel down. Let's just flow right through this. Lifting, exhale, warrior two. Let's go back to our triangle pose. Lengthening the leg, shifting forward and down. Right there. That nice lengthening through the hamstring. Again, hips are nicely aligned. And you're getting a side body stretch here too. Okay, let's come back to our warrior two, lifting, windmill forward, ah, step back into plank, hips to the sky, down dog. Other side, ready for pigeon pose, so left leg extends, let's bring the knee to the floor behind the wrist, right there. I'm going to turn and mirror you, okay, so the knee is coming right up to the wrist, perhaps slightly to the outside, just like that, see that? And then just, just maneuvering the leg, whatever feels right for you, okay? There isn't one correct posture or way that the leg has to be, okay? You just really want to feel where your body is and what it needs, especially if there's those knee issues or even low back, okay? Just do something completely different if you need to. Lie on the floor and do the alternative posture, which still can really find some nice release in the outer hip and glute area. Okay. So here in our pigeon pose, since we are working outer hips, maybe you do feel this on the outside here, and a little bit on the inner thighs. Let's start crawling it forward. Just bring the forearms down to the floor if you're able. Maybe even your forehead, that just keeps the neck neutral. Just like that. Let me go back to my posture here. So left knee is forward. Here's something else. Just to be aware of, if you feel like you've created a little bit more space in your body, how do you get deeper into the pose? Okay? You can just do this, very simple. Just use your knee and your toes behind you and just crawl it back a little bit. Now it doesn't have to go far at all. Just a nice lengthening of the leg. And then lifting your heart slightly and try to move up and forward. Then come back down. Okay? And now it didn't seem like I moved too much and it doesn't have to be too much to actually get deeper into the pose by doing those very simple movements. And I really feel this on the outer hip. Do you feel this right out here? If you needed to, you can even bring this foot that's underneath you, maybe a little closer up towards the front edge of your mat to get a little bit more sensation. All right, let's rise back up. Crawl that right leg in so you can shift your weight into your hands. Let's return to, here we go, downward facing dog, leg extended, reach, bring it to the top of the mat, warrior one, set the heel down, reach forward, come up, Ah, here's our opening into warrior two, a little wider, triangle pose, lengthen leg, shift, reach, moving along this plane right here, right over the foot, and rotate, ah, Good breathing here. <clears throat> Another sensation, be aware if your back end is pushing back behind you. You want to make sure it's pushing forward. That's going to give you more alignment and more stretch on that side. Exhale, bend the left knee, return to warrior two. Windmill forward. Let's step back into plank. Hips to the sky. Downward facing dog. Let's step up to the top of the mat, both feet. Inhale, monkey pose. And a fold. Let's just go ahead and reverse the swan dive. Come all the way back up, reaching nice and high. In the hands to heart center. All right, just a pause here. 
Just find that natural alignment of the body, strong legs, strong spine, torso lifting. Just coming to a neutralized posture before we go back down to the floor and working our hips. Here we go, next pose. Together, let's inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, let's swan dive. See if you can start moving now with straighter legs. Before when we started, we were moving with bent knees. So maybe just slowly making your way down to the floor, feeling that nice extra stretch through the hamstring muscles there. Inhale, monkey pose, grow long. Bring the hands to the floor, walk, step, or jump back to plank. Let's come down, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Right leg extends up and back. Bring it to the top of the mat. Let's return to our high lunge. So our left heel remains lifted. Reach forward, come up, and here's our opening into warrior two. Okay. All right, now you're gonna lengthen your right leg with a new pose. Lengthen in the right leg, and just turn your right set of toes forward. So everything's facing the same direction here. Okay. Now I'm gonna mirror you. So we're going to be here. So an inhale. On the exhale, we're just going to bring this forward. It's just like doing another forward fold. Coming forward, bring the hands to the floor right here. Now if you need to, you can go a little wider in the stance with your feet. Hands are on the floor. Feel as if you can lift up and lengthen through the spine. Then exhale deepening the pose. Now you're going to feel this through the hamstrings for sure. And maybe on the outer side of the legs here. Okay, right through here. You may not feel it today. You might feel it tomorrow. Okay, right through there. Also being aware of where your weight is in your body. Okay, if your hands are on the floor here, just want to be aware if you've got too much weight into your hands. Can you see that shift? Where I've got way too much weight in my hands and it takes the sensation away from the legs. It really does. Okay, so shift back. Also being aware of the weight along your foot right here too. So be aware if you're sitting back into your heels, which also makes you sit back into your backside there. Okay, or if you got too much weight into your toes, which puts too much weight into your hands. So we're just trying to find that balance. Okay, so that here you can probably just lift your hands off the floor with ease because you're supported by your core body and the hamstrings. Alrighty, we're going to rise back up, extend the arms out side to side. We're here, then we're rising up all the way. Okay, let me just turn so I'm back on my mat. We're going to turn the right foot forward lunging back into the warrior two. We're going to do the other side. So it's going to windmill forward here. Step back, plank, let's bring it down. Chaturanga Dandasana, upward facing dog here, and downward facing dog. Other side, left leg extends, bring it to the top of the mat, high lunge. Oops, I want to creep my toes forward, didn't get wide enough there. Heel lifted behind you, reach forward, and opening into warrior two. Lengthen left leg, and then turn your toes forward so everything's facing the same direction. Okay, let me just turn this way, right here. I want to feel nice and tall here. Okay, take a look at this before you fold over. Take a look at this because we want to avoid this sensation of bending and sitting back into a chair. Okay. We want, to, we want to use our core and the hamstrings to help support the body in this fold. So it almost feels like you're going to fall forward. All right, let's do this together. Here we go. Inhale, supported by core body, going forward rather than trying to sit back. So to keeping the hips exactly where they are. You're maybe even gripping the mat with your toes there. Here we are. We found the floor. I'm going to go a little wider, just a little bit. Hands are on the floor, but very light. Very light, so not a lot of weight here. Inhale to lengthen through spine. And maybe deepening the fold. Ooh, now I'm feeling that in the hamstrings here. Outer shin area. Relax your head. I have my head lifted here, but you really want to keep your head relaxed and neutral. 
feels really good on those hamstrings. Make sure you're engaging in your core to help hold your body. Here's the little test. Just kind of take your hands off the mat there to see if you fall over <laughs> or fall backward. Hits come back up with an exhale, coming up, flat back, all the way up. Nice and tall there. Let's turn the left set of toes forward. Lunging back into our warrior two. Let me just turn so I'm all on my, on my mat. Right there. And windmill forward. Step back, plank pose. Finish the flow. Upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. Let's bring the knees back to the floor. And hero pose. Okay. Again, another little stretch for the quads, knees, and your ankles. Go ahead and take a seat. Let's return to our cobbler's pose, our bound angle pose. Again, really, you know, there's no rule that says you have to have the heels as close as you can towards the pelvis. You can kind of play with this. You can have them out a little bit or close or somewhere in between. That way you get different sensations, actually, in the inner thighs. Scooping up your toes or your ankles or holding onto your shins, setting up nice and tall here, taking it forward. All right, I think the body and the hips are warm enough to move into some other postures. We'll take this pose for a few more breaths. About two more breaths here. Feel the spine extend here with an inhale like you're going up and over your imaginary wall. Exhale, coming down. All right, let's rise back up, re-extend the spine. Here we go. All right, just simply cross your legs here for a moment. Ah, sitting up nice and tall once again. All righty. Okay, now these next few poses are really going to work the outer hips. Okay, two poses, two poses. One is actually just a portion of an entire posture, which is called cow face pose. Okay, it's an odd name, but actually when you get into the pose, and I'll show you, um, it looks like the face or a head of a cow, okay? We're just going to do the leg portion of it because it really emphasizes the outer hips. Now here's a way you can get into this pose. There's several ways you can get, in, get into the pose, but let's do it this way. Okay, come up to your hands and knees, just like this, just facing forward. Okay, now I'm going to turn away from you so you can see this and what's happening to my legs here, okay? All righty. I'm going to start with my right knee and just kind of move it up between my hands. Not completely up to the hands, but just so that it's just moving from the right side to center right there. I'm going to move that foot out to the side, okay? Actually, oops, wrong way. I'm going to lift this knee off the floor. Actually turn your right foot to the left side, just like that. That's where we want it. Now take this left knee, you're just going to tuck it in nice and tight, right up in that little space you created here. And then move that foot out to the side. Now what you've created behind you is a seat, okay, or a little space to take a seat. I'm just going to turn, okay, so nicely connected here. You're going to really feel this as you carefully, slowly sit back onto the floor. Now if you feel like that's a little too much for you, whoa, I can already feel that. You can even sit on a block, so maybe a, a towel or a, or a folded blanket or something, just to give yourself a little bit of a lift, because this is pretty dynamic. I'm going to face you. Right there, just getting retucked right there, feeling the intensity. Do you feel that in the outer hips right there? Alrighty. Now we're not going to do the upper body portion, you can just let rest your hands here. Maybe it helped to extend the spine. I'm gently pressing down, lifting up. You can even take this to a forward fold if you need more sensation. So let me show you the full cow face posture. Okay? Part of this is an arm workout and shoulder opening. So let me just show you. I'm gonna take my right hand behind me, okay? Bent back there. And so my hand is right in the middle of my back. So I'm just gonna crawl up my back. Other hand, my left hand is going up overhead and reaching for the other set of fingers back behind me. And if you can't reach your fingers, you can use a towel or a strap or something. So you're sitting up nice and tall. Now you don't have to do this, okay? So this is the cow face. So this left elbow that's up in the air, that's the ear of the cow, okay, of the head. 
right there. And actually, down here, the legs create the mouth of the cow. So that's cow face pose, right there. We're just focusing on the bottom half, right there. All righty. Now I'm gonna show you a very fun way to get to the other side. You don't have to do this. Actually, you can watch me first. This is just kind of fun to do. Okay, I'm gonna keep my legs just as they are. I'm gonna really dig my feet into the floor. Okay, really dig, because I'm gonna spin around. Okay, watch this. I'm just gonna use my hands, lift up off the floor. Now my feet never move. They're planted on the mat, but I'm turning the natural direction that my body can go all the way around. See, my feet are still on the floor and I can come to the other side right there. Now you can give that a shot. Sometimes you can get a little confused on where do I go? How do I turn? Okay. Otherwise, you can just come onto your hands and knees and get into it the other way. So I'll just quickly demonstrate that. So we did the right knee forward first. Just bring the left knee forward right in the center. I'm going to lift my right knee out of the way so I can kick that left foot to the outside, to the right side. Right knee, tuck it in. Right foot out and create the little space behind you to take the seat. <sighs> right there, I'm gonna face you once again. Here we go. So here's the portion, just the bottom half of our cow face pose. <sighs> Pretty dynamic. Now it's okay if the knees don't completely stack. Mine aren't here, certainly, but they might over time as you continue practicing this pose. Maybe you're more like this. Okay, which is perfectly fine too. If you're still feeling sensation in the outer hips, even in this pose, then you're doing it properly. That's all it is. As long as you feel something, that's part of our yoga practice. And just being aware of the sensations in your own body. And if they're intense, like this one can be, breathe into them. Just breathe into that sensation. That's what yoga is about. Bringing ourselves to a greater awareness of ourselves. All righty. Let's carefully unfold our legs there. Ah, maybe just extend them out in front, shake them out. Maybe rub right there a little bit, a little massage. All right there, let's go back to our staff pose. So feet were extended out in front, flex your feet. Hands by your side, push down, roll the shoulders back. Nice and tall, well lifted. So a very engaged posture here. Very engaged, but a neutral one. With the exhale. Just draw the belly button in towards your spine. Just two more breaths. It's a way of neutralizing the whole body by keeping it engaged. All right, I have another pose for you. It has several names. Uh, one name is Double Pigeon. Another name is Stack the Logs or Knee to Ankle Pose, okay? But all the same thing. Here we go. Now do this with me. I'm gonna Mirror you, so you take your left leg. I'm using my right leg, but do you, your left leg so I can mirror you. So left leg is gonna be on the bottom, right here. And you're probably sitting near the top edge of your mat. Just make sure your shin is, at, is parallel with the front edge of your mat, just like that. So being aware if you brought your heel in, if so, push it away. So your shin is parallel with the front edge of your mat. Okay, that's the first part. Then take your right leg, we're gonna stack the logs, or take the ankle and place it right on top of the knee, as best as you can, right there. Okay, that's not the end, because you have to stack the other side, knee to ankle on the other side. So I'm just gonna readjust my body, sit up nice and tall. Okay, and see if we can bring this knee a little closer towards the ankle. And guess what, look, there's a gap right there. And maybe you're there too, where the, you're like this, and it's like, there's no way my knee is gonna touch my ankle. But if you feel something, you're still doing it properly. So keep coming back to this pose once in a while and just watch your progression, because you'll find that, wow, look at this, it's getting closer. Okay, here's a little tip you can do to help with that closing of the gap. Just take your hands behind you, like you did, in staff pose and a little push into the floor. I'm just gonna take them a little farther back, push, almost lean back a little bit, a little lighter in your hips and you might find that you can close the gap a little bit. Okay, as we keep holding the pose, keep breathing deeply, you might find that knee will come right down to the ankle. Okay, you can even assist it if you feel, whoa, I'm already feeling that, okay. 
push a little closer. Yes, I'm just putting a little, some light pressure of my elbow right down on that knee so I can have that connection. Here. Now I'm really feeling that on both sides. I bet you are too. So sitting up nice and tall, lifting and lengthening. Wow. Even just these little subtle movements of the body really intensify these poses. Again, if, if you're not here, nor do you have to be here, and maybe your pose is still here, just like this is fine. Even if this foot's slightly on the floor, that's okay. Okay, here's another thing you can do to kind of modify the pose so it doesn't feel so intense. Now, I've got ankle to knee right there. To lessen the intensity, pull this foot back away from the knee, more towards your calf. So you're more like this. Now, the shins are still parallel with the floor, and this might allow you to kind of drop that leg down to the side. So we'll kind of play with that sensation there too. Or maybe you're here and you're feeling like, well, John, this is just way too easy, okay? So, and if that's the case, you wanna take this foot to the outside. Now this is gonna make it more intense for me. So the ankle goes way outside the knee there and then reconnect on that side. So that's much more intense, okay? All right, I think we've been here long enough. Let's go ahead and release it. Go ahead and extend the legs out in front. Again, just shake it out, rub it out a little bit. Okay. All right, let's do the other side. So, your right leg underneath, shin parallel with the front edge of your mat. Let's do the ankle to knee, okay, or modify if you need to bring it in, that's fine. Or go to the outside. Start there. Just shifting, see how I'm just kind of shifting my body here. So I can sit up nice and tall and start to close the gap. Even if there is a little space there, that's perfectly fine. All righty, let's see if I can get a little deeper into this pose. Just work with me. Use your breath, that's how you get deeper into these poses. Perhaps an inhale to lift and lengthen through the spine. And exhale to take it forward. Or remember, don't forget, you can place the hands behind you, a little push into the floor. That might help to close the gap. Right here is fine. You don't have to go into the forward fold. That's what's so fun about yoga, really, there's so many variations of certain postures. There is no one correct way of doing any one of these postures. Lots of variations. I'm gonna go a little deeper. All right, after this intense pose, I got one more for you. All right, a few more breaths, feeling knees, so outer hips. Okay, our next pose in a moment is gonna work the inner thighs a little bit. It's gonna almost look like you're doing the splits. It'll feel like you're doing the splits. I'll show you in a moment. Okay, about three more breaths here. And then rise back up. Go ahead and re-extend the legs. Ooh, shake them out. Give them a little massage right there. Okay. Well, we're gonna take the legs wide here. Just like that, so we're just creating a big V, a big V shape with your body. Okay, go as wide as you can go. Okay. I'll go that wide, right there. We're gonna flex the feet, just like when you had the legs straight out in front of you. You wanna flex your feet here, so you get the most extension through the legs. So flex the feet, heels are pushing away, toes are pulling in towards yourself. You may already start to feel this. You might feel this in your hamstrings, okay, maybe in the inner thighs a little bit. We're gonna take this to a forward fold. Okay, but let's start th with this. Bring the hands behind you, that same little strategy of pushing down into the floor. I feel like you're getting up off the floor actually gives you a little bit more space in your hips so that you can go deeper into any posture. Okay, so that's our intention here. I'm gonna walk my fingertips a little closer towards my body, lifting up. Also, this helps to get the shoulders back a little bit here too. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, go up and over your imaginary wall, coming down. Again, you don't have to go very far. I'm already feeling this, okay? If you do already have some flexibility here, okay, maybe you can bring one hand in front, keep the other hand behind you just so you have a nice extended spine or bring both hands in front and just start taking this farther forward. 
Alrighty, some things to be aware of in this posture and what's happening. Since the body, upper body is coming forward, you want to be aware of your legs because they might, may want to roll in here too. You can kind of watch your toes. They might, may want to roll in too, which changes, changes the sensation of the pose. To get more opening, we want to try to get an outer rotation or outer spiral of the legs. Okay, so way up here in that socket, you want to feel the whole leg feel like it's rolling backward. Okay, both sides there. As they're rolling back, you're lifting up, creating space in the torso, in the pelvic bowl there, and you're going forward. So two motions, legs rolling back, torso coming forward. How are you feeling with this? If you're starting to feel a little burn in the backs of your knees, because this is pretty intense, you know what you can do? You can actually just bend your knees a little bit. That works just fine, okay? Because you can still feel the intensity of the posture. All right, just re-extending. Let me see if I can go a little farther here today. You can join me or just stay where you are, whatever is best for your body today. You do want to be warm. That's why we went through all that warm-up movement of the hips, our sun salutations, all those different dynamic postures to get us here to the intensity of these poses. All right, two more breaths here. Good stretches. Wow, really intense. Let's walk our way back up. Okay, let's come back to our cobbler's pose. We're gonna assist my legs here, bring them back. There we go, bring the bottoms of the feet together. Ah, a little bit more comfortable there. That takes that little strain off the backs of the knees. We can sit up nice and tall. Ah, even take this to a forward fold if you'd like. One more time in our cobbler's pose. So very common postures. We really do come back to this pose pretty often. We've done this in other classes together. So those other ones, just taking things a little deeper. All right, two more breaths. We can start to bring things down a little bit. Okay, let's re-extend the spine. Making sure you're sitting in the center of your mat. Go ahead and roll onto your back here. Bring the knees in towards your heart. Give yourself a little hug. Okay, one more leg extension here. Let's go ahead and extend the left leg down to the floor. Flex that foot because you want to keep that body, keep the leg engaged. We're going to extend the right leg up. Okay, maybe it's pointing up towards the ceiling. Maybe it's out there. That's fine. And just hold on to the back of the leg with your hands. You can just clasp your fingers behind it. You might be able to kind of climb up the leg and find your big toe. Okay, if you can do that, that's good. But here is fine. Also, that foot's flexed. So each inhale, you want to extend the legs, both legs. So the one leg in the sky going up or forward, and the other heel pushing towards the wall out in front of you. That's the inhale. It's like you're lifting or lengthening the leg so it's pulling out of its socket. Not really, but that's kind of the sensation so that you can draw it a little closer toward yourself, getting a little bit more sensation there. Okay, We're going to take this to a half happy baby pose, so just one leg. So I'm going to start bending this leg. The knee is going to start going to the outside of your body here, out, out there, away from the torso. Reach to grab hold the bottom of the foot, and the foot is facing the ceiling there. I'm just pressing down. So we're getting a nice inner thigh stretch with that too. Okay, pressing downward. This feels really good. So half happy baby pose. Okay, we've done this with both feet. Okay, that's just a regular happy baby. That's just half. Just one leg. Pressing down. You can even just gently move this. A little massage here. <sighs> gently moving very slowly and very carefully. Just kind of get into those subtle points in the hip socket there to help release. Okay. Let's go ahead and carefully release that foot. Re-extend it out in front onto the floor. Flex that foot. Let's bring the left knee in. Let's do the other side. Right there. Little hug and extend uh, as best as you can, holding on to the back of the leg, wherever you can reach naturally here. Both feet are flexed. Inhale to push both legs away. And both legs away. <sighs> Feeling like this whole leg, since my leg is extended up towards the sky here, I'm trying to go up. <sighs> and whoa, 
really extending, creating space here in the socket so I can draw it a little closer towards myself there. My left side is a little bit more tight. So I'm really working hard to just increase the flexibility on this side. Sometimes it's challenging for me to reach up and grab the big toe. But if you can't grab your toes, you know what, that's okay. You can even just hold on here or even just the back of your leg. Let's go to our half happy baby pose, bending the knee. It just goes to the outside of the body. Hold on to the bottom of the foot and it's facing the ceiling. And just uh, gently pressing down. There we go. Lots of breath here because you can give yourself some good stretch sensations and opening and release in the parts of the body that can get really tight. Just a gentle massage just to feel a little bit more release there. Let's go ahead and release that foot. Let's bring both knees in towards the heart. Let's imagine that the knees are a book. And you're about to open the book. So open your book and keep the bottoms of the feet together here. Hold on to your toes or ankles. This is just a reclining version of our cobbler's pose. Heels are pressing down towards the pelvis. You have to actually help your body to do that. Pressing down and the knees still opening, pushing forward, opening the book nice and wide. Nice sensation there. Here's a variation. You can stay here. This is fine. But then you can bring the feet down to the floor like this. Heels are still pulling in towards pelvis. And just let gravity assist the book opening here. This is nice too. You can even just have the arms by your side or even just the inner thighs right there. Just feel that natural release. You can stay here for several minutes. This is a really nice opening posture. Take about three more breaths here. Nice and slow, nice and deep. After your third breath, let's move or feel free to stay here longer if you'd like. Just bring the knees together when you are ready to move and just extend the legs straight out in front of you onto the floor. Just energize the body here. Maybe just tense up just a little bit with an inhale. And then completely release and relax your body <sighs> on the exhale. Just feel that complete opposite of feeling tense, <sighs> which is feeling completely relaxed. So here we are in Shavasana, coming to the close of our practice today. Just some gentle breathing. Keep yourself very mindful of the breath. Close your eyes and just move inside. If your mind begins to wander, you might be thinking about, oh, the next meeting you have to go to, or the laundry has to get done, or what are the kids doing? So if you feel any of those thoughts come into your mind, just be aware of the thought. Maybe just tell yourself that, oh, I'm thinking. And then come back to your breath. Two more breaths here. Stay here longer if you'd like. You don't have to move just yet. If you are ready to move, just carefully, slowly roll over to either side of your body. Then carefully rise up. Just come to a very comfortable seated posture here. Just an easy pose is fine. Just crossing the legs here. Just bring our hands to heart center. We've come to the close of our practice. You did a great job. Take a nice breath in and exhale. And like with every practice together, we close together by saying Namaste.
Thank you for joining me today with the Gym Box Yoga. My name is John and we'll see you next time.